got chocolate and wine. Chocolate and wine time. Mm, mm, mm. One, two, three. No way. Like, to me, it's just mad. That is mad. Bit too much wine. Mm. Amazing. guys welcome back to my channel and welcome to this new series that I'm bringing here on my channel and I'm just so overwhelmingly excited about this series so I'm sorry if I'm loud and I'm brash and I'm annoying in this video it's just because I'm just really excited about this series that I'm bringing to you guys super quickly if you can see all these balloons and chaos behind me that is because we are celebrating hitting 10,000 of you lovely people over on my Instagram if you haven't already followed me over there, I'm going to link it below, but finally hit 10,000, which I know you should not measure achievements with numbers, but for me, 10,000 was just a really big milestone that I've wanted to kind of achieve for a super long time, and I'm so happy. I've also just reached 35,000 followers on YouTube. So, you know, there's madness that's going on at the moment, but I'm super, super grateful. I just want you guys to all know that, and I see and appreciate each and every one of you that chooses to follow, engage with my content, like my content. It genuinely does mean a lot to me. But for today's video, we are gonna be filming a new little series that I'm bringing to this channel, and it's gonna be called Wine Wednesdays. So I'm intending on having one of these videos go up once, once a week, if not once every two weeks. So, this is the first episode and I'm I'm feeling excited, a bit nervous. I'm, I'm actually really excited to just kind of get into some juicy topics with you guys. Sit down, do more Q&A style kind of girl talk chats because if I'm honest, I love giving advice. Doesn't mean it's the best, but I do love giving advice. I love listening to podcasts. I feel like this is kind of like my little version of that. Before we get into today's video, if you are not already subscribed to my channel, go down there, hit subscribe, turn the bell on. Don't forget, to, uh, bleh, 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 speak English. Don't forget to leave this video with a like and also drop me a comment. And let me know what format you guys want to see in the future, what topics you want me to discuss, and what special guests you want to have on this series. Also, a little disclaimer: this video is probably not going to be monetized, which is just great for me. Love that. I'm drinking alcohol, and YouTube don't like that. But I just want to put this disclaimer at the beginning of this video. I think you guys all know it anyway. I am of legal age. I am 22, nearly 23, and I like to drink wine in moderation. I do go out on a Saturday night and drink as well. But what I'm saying is, this is just kind of like a grown-up chit chat question time video if you're not legal at the legal age which is 18 in the UK please don't drink I just want to put that disclaimer at the beginning because I know some people do get offended when you talk about alcohol I've got alcohol and chocolate here so and I'm supposed to be going to the gym tomorrow morning for a PT session so I love my life anyway I've been rambling let's just get into the video I'm going to start out with this question that was kind of a common question and it was how do you go about making friends online? I also got asked how do you chat to YouTubers you think you'd be friends with without them thinking that you're using them etc. Is there pressure meeting YouTubers who have more followers? Loved these questions just because they're so relatable to me so I thought I would start out there with kind of like the digital world and making friends within this chaotic environment. So first off I completely respect and understand what you're saying when you say making friends or meeting friends that have more followers than you can be a struggle. I personally never reached out to anyone in that way that had more followers just because I assumed the same thing. I assumed that they would think that I was only wanting to be friends with them to piggyback off of their fame, which I think you can see through people quite easily, if I'm honest. But there is still that kind of barrier and restriction that obviously prevents you from doing that. Like if someone's got 4 million followers on Instagram, you can't just slide into the DMs and say, hey, let's go for a coffee. I've got this vibe that we would be very good friends. Like the likelihood is they're either not gonna see that message or they're just gonna assume otherwise that you're not doing it for kind of sincere reasons. So I can totally appreciate where you're coming from. However, what I did do a lot when I was kind of growing and like still now, I'm still a very, very small influencer, is I do reply to people's Insta stories all the time, but I reply out of sincerity, not just because I want to be friends with them or I think we'd get on. Like I reply, you know, general things that I'm thinking. So I think making friends online is one thing, but making friends with people that have a lot more followers than you is a completely different thing. And it's definitely a lot harder. For example is me and Misha's friendship, the lovely Misha Grimes. Hey honey. Um, 
I watched her videos for a very long time. I was a fan of her videos. And I just knew, again, me and her would get on. I knew we would vibe off each other and we're just kind of similar. But I had a lot less followers, so I could never message her and say, hey babe, I've just got this feeling we'd get on so well, let's go hang out and have a coffee. Now I'm not saying you shouldn't do that, I'm just saying nine times out of 10, I don't think anything's gonna come of it because I think people unfortunately will either assume like what, or they'll just assume that it's just not sincere, which I know is so crap if you are being sincere, but I think unfortunately that's just the way it is. I think you become slightly more guarded when you have more followers. That's just what I think people become like. I could be so wrong here. So I always would reply to her Insta stories again, but I would never message her like, let's go hang out. And she actually reached out and messaged me. She was like, would you want to film together? Would you want to hang out together? And after that initial filming session, we just knew that we would really get on as friends. We got on so well that day. So it's really hard when you think you would be friends with someone who has a lot more followers than you, but don't then like, think that it's automatically not gonna happen. I'm just saying you probably aren't gonna meet up and go for drinks or something straight away. Another question was from a girl and she said, have you ever had to phase a friend out of your life? Yes, I have. Toxic friends. Now, toxic friends are like toxic boyfriends, toxic family members. They're, they're, you're always gonna find them. They're never not gonna be there. It's like, you know, that's just the way life is. There are just gonna be some people that you have a relationship with and it either goes sour or it ends up taking a u-turn or whatever it may be i don't think it's an unhealthy thing to face people out of your life i think there's a misconception that if you choose to no longer be friends with somebody that you're negative that you're miserable that you're not making an effort and it's like whoa whoa whoa, whoa. if i have consciously chosen to no longer be friends with someone, it's probably because something deep's gone on something's cut me pretty harsh i have phased someone out of my life that i I would say I was quite friendly with. I don't know if it was intentionally. I think maybe unconsciously it was inten intentional, but it wasn't just me, it was on both sides. And I always think it's super, super interesting when you take a, take a step back from a friend that you seem to make 90% of the effort with, when you take a step back to see whether or not they reach out to you. I always think that's very interesting. I'm gonna leave a blog post in the description box that was written by a lovely girl called Scarlett London. And it's about that essentially she so kind of did like a social experiment where she used to be the one the friend that would set up arrangements and dates and this that and the other and she took a step back and she saw a shift in in her friendships and who actually reached out to her now i'm not saying you should do that all the time i just think if you are that girl or that guy that is the one that's constantly making the effort 24 7 just reassess a little bit, that's all. The only thing I am gonna say is I'm horrendous with my phone. It's so ironic, I'm on social media, I'm constantly on my phone, but with friendships, I'm crap with my phone. Now, 95% of my friends in my life kind of know that. They've kind of accepted that it's not personal, they kind of know I'm just shit with replying, and everything else, I'm hopefully I'm pretty cool with. So I think you also make sacrifices and it depends on what is important to you in a friend. If you feel like you consciously make the effort all the time, but you think they're a really good person to have in your life, then I wouldn't say cut them out because it's a little bit unnecessary and you know, just what are you achieving? I think if someone is making you feel negative, giving you toxic energy, bad vibes, any of that stuff, I personally think cut it out. I think other people's energy rubs off on you and I totally find that. I don't know if it's an Aquarius thing or what it is, but I absorb other people's emotions and I put it onto myself. And if someone is super negative all the time or miserable or constantly slagging other people off or bitching about other girls and you have that in your you know, atmosphere all the time, it is gonna affect your psyche. And I don't think there's anything wrong with just deciding, do you know what? For the sake of myself, I'm gonna make a decision that's gonna better me. I'm probably gonna just cut ties with that person. Obviously nothing, it doesn't always has to have to be as well so nasty. Sometimes you can just like, things can just like fade away. It doesn't always have to be like a row or an argument or she said that or sometimes you can just be mature and be like, do you know what? This has kind of run its course in my head. It's kind of like relationships, you know, you fall out of love with people. I think you can fall out of love with friends as well, unfortunately. Oh, that's so cute. Some of my friends are very cute on the old bloody question thing. A similar follow on from that is a girl who said how to get over the fear of bumping into an old best friend or their family in my hometown. I don't know how that relationship ended, whether it was kind of like you just fizzled out or if it did end dramatically and in a really negative way. I think own it. I kind of just think own things in life. Like when I say something or if I feel passionate about something or whatever it is, I kind of just own my emotions and my feelings because I think the more you own how you feel, then the more you kind of like can get through situations and they, they 
they tend to be not as dramatic um, in your head as they actually are in reality. I don't know if that makes any sense. I would just say, if it did end badly and you're worried about seeing them out in public, be polite. You would just say, hi, how are you? How have you been? That's really nice. Yeah, have a great day. And you kind of go your separate ways. And yeah, maybe it's a bit awkward. Maybe it's a bit frosty. But I kind of think it's better to do that than run across the opposite side of the road, be trying to hide in and out of every bloody store. And it's just, you're putting yourself in an awkward position. And if you feel like you can't go out in your own town, I can't imagine that. That would drive me crazy. I also with their family and stuff, like I've had friends fall out with certain people bump into their family members. I don't think those family members should be commenting on the situation because I think the only people that know what is going on within that friendship or relationship is you two individuals or however many people are involved in that situation. Your family members only hear one side of the story and I always believe there are one, two, three sides to every story. Hers, yours and the truth. So family members commenting on like other people's arguments I think is a little bit petty and I don't vibe with that. Someone has asked me, how do you make new friends? I struggle being friends with girls because I find them bitchy. Now I hear this a lot from people. Am I in focus? I'm not in bloody focus, am I? Now I hear this a lot. I hear this a lot from girls. Like, oh, I'm not friends with girls because I find them bitchy. Sometimes I think it's sincere. Sometimes I think like it's always, <laughs> it sounds so awful, but sometimes it's those girls that like just want to not be friends with girls. I'm not saying that's what this person is. I'm saying there are two scenarios. There are scenarios where unfortunately across, within your life you just come across really nasty girls and that's crap. But there are also situations where like, I don't know, I feel like everyone's met that girl that's like, I'm not friends with girls, I find them really bitchy, but then goes and hangs out with like 15 guys and makes no conscious effort with any women. Anyone else? I don't know, maybe that's just me. I think it's all about who you meet. And there are bitchy girls, oh, there are bitchy girls trust me there are also bitchy guys um especially at uni i met a lot of bitchy guys guys that would kind of slag women off behind their backs like slag guys off behind their backs um love to get involved with drama so i kind of found them equally as bitchy it wasn't just like a male female thing it's all about the personality and i think i feel like i have quite a good sense of character and judgment to kind of suss that out because if I meet someone for the first time and the first kind of initial conversations back and forth are about another girl in a negative way, immediately alarm bells kind of ring for me and I'm like, oh, why? why are we talking about her? We don't know her. And obviously all girls bitch, we all like to have a bit of a gossiping session, but I just think you can kind of tell when someone kind of has that attitude where they constantly talk about other people's appearance or like rumors about other people or how many other people that person's been with or things like that. Those for me are kind of the bitchy girls. I know it's so difficult to like make friends. I'm particularly finding that in my 20s, I'm quite lucky in that I have a lot of friends that I've been friends with for a long time. Um, I also think university was great for me. I met a group of lovely girls, but even that is a whole different video. And I want to do a whole Wine Wednesdays on uni because I definitely had some university experiences that were not positive, that were negative. I met some really awful people. <laughs> and people that would bitch and would slag other people off and would do some really weird things to each other like go off with each other's boyfriends and just stuff that I just found so odd but what I kind of found at uni was once I had found my girls that I knew were good and loyal and true friends I kind of just stop making that much of an effort with everybody else which I know might sound really negative but for me I had those core people that I knew were good people inside and out so I didn't feel that desire to just like keep making endless amounts of friends and I know some people do feel that way but I personally feel like I would rather have four people in a room that have my back would stand up for me that are my ride or dies than have 40 in a room that would never come to my defense I think you have to remind yourself of that it's so easy to compare and say oh, they've got so many friends they've got so many followers yeah but at the, at the end of the day when shit hits the fan or when you really need a mate at two in the morning or whatever it is how many of them would be there and I think that's way more telling. So, yeah, just my opinion. Apologies for the bit of a move around. Um, my camera battery died, but we're back. 
someone has asked me friends falling apart after leaving college and not talking again and being alone so i'm assuming this is kind of about you had a group of friends that you were friendly with when you're at uni or college and you've left and that relationship seems to have kind of disappeared Unfortunately, I think this is kind of natural. I actually went to university with a group of girls who live all over the country, all so busy in our own lives, which I know sounds like an excuse, but you know, they either go to work nine to five, they work in London, or you know, they don't get home till seven. Then on their weekends, they're seeing their home friends or their boyfriend or whatever it is. So I do think that you do have to make an effort. It's definitely a conscious thing when you have friends that don't live near. But I definitely think it's about contact and keeping that line of communication. It's like any form of a relationship, whether that's romantic or just a friendship, you do have to keep that form of communication going. And I always think, make an effort to say, right, we can't see each other all the time. It's once every three months, we are doing dinner. Like whatever it is that would work out for all of you collectively, I would say do that and say once a month we're all going for food or we're all going to go and have a drink or just a coffee or if you both work in London maybe once a week see if you could meet each other on your break or and I know it's a bit awkward and you've got to figure things out and it's not as simple and it's not as easy as maybe your friends that live near you but I think that is still no excuse because my uni friends they saw the highs and the lows and I mean I lived with them for nearly three years so me that relationship is completely different to the relationship i have with my home friends not meaning to say one's more important than the other but we've just seen each other in different places my uni girls know me you know i lived with them in the same house we eat slept breathed together cooked together went on nights out like we did it all so i think it's making that that effort unfortunately you've really got to just keep that communication and effort going between the two of you and if the relationship and the foundation are strong enough in my opinion it will last and it will be able to get through distance someone's asked me how did your friends take it about you starting youtube my friends are like my soul sisters they are so endlessly supportive they lift me up they give me positive vibes good energy and in my opinion that's everything that a good friend should do for you so i've had a lot of this comment come through either on different q a's or different advice series things where people have said to me oh i don't think my friends will like it if i start youtube are they your mates then because i think if you're doing something that you're passionate about and that you want to go out and achieve they should support you as long as it's not damaging yourself or you're not damaging anybody else then i i just think they should be supportive even if they don't get it you know i have some friends that don't really get it so they don't watch youtube or they don't know about the digital kind of age i know it sounds ridiculous because they're young but they just it's just not their kind of thing they still endlessly support me when i initially started my youtube a long time ago i definitely had a lot more backlash i had a good friend of mine who sh i don't know if they struggled to understand what i was doing or if they just thought i was strange and i remember this one instant very very vividly they threw the comment out at a party with a group of people we'd got into an argument about something else an altercation about live in taxi they were like you're a weirdo because you do videos and this that and the other and it really hurt me because they were my friend and they used a sensitive topic to kind of try and embarrass me and humiliate me me and that person are super friendly now and we're all good and everything's cool but i'm just using this as an example to say some people just don't get it and now that person gets it i think and thinks it's kind of normal and is kind of interested in it and is actually really supportive and really kind and congratulates me on milestones that i reach but i think back then it was just not cool it was weird and i think because i was younger maybe the content i produced was more unusual because i didn't know what i was doing you know it was like a stab in the dark so yeah i think you've got to, you've got to assess and weigh up who your friends are because i think your friends should be supporting you not tearing you down okay guys so that is going to be it for the first episode of wine wednesdays cheers to you all that's all we've got left just started eating chocolate so probably got that all around my mouth and also does anyone else end up with a glass that looks like that on a night out is it just me covered in lipstick hope you guys all enjoyed this first episode i know that it wasn't the most juicy or scandalous but i wanted to kind of ease our way in start out chilled and i thought starting out with kind of like girl dramas and friendships and just kind of like advice or experiences that i've had was kind of a good way to start there's definitely a lot more stories that i could talk about but you know when you just don't know if you want to bring up drama i feel like i should avoid telling a lot of those stories then again some of them are quite juicy so we'll have to see let me know what topic you want to be for the next installment of wine wednesdays i'm thinking it's going to be a boy talk kind of one all about being a single gal in 2019 at 23 um and i think i'm gonna have a special guest for that so 
I think that's probably going to be the second topic. Also, don't forget to drop me a comment below and let me know which topic you want me to discuss in my next episode of Wine Wednesdays. I would love to do one on like nights out and clubbing, my experiences clubbing, um, good, bad and the ugly. Um, yeah, whatever you want the topic to be on, if it's school, whatever it is, just let me know in the comment section and I will read all of your lovely comments. Thank you so much if you made it to the end of this very, very long video. I hope you guys don't mind them super long, but I think it's kind of a bit, bit more chilled and a bit more chit chatty, you know? Um, thank you so much for watching as always. Don't forget to hit subscribe below and guys, I will catch you all in the next one. Cheers.